Yeah, man, uh, we, we, we knew we were playing against a team that is very organized, a formidable side with a very brilliant coach in Clinton Larson. Also a team that has got a lot of ex-professional players, Nene, Zuke, you name them. They, they've got quite a lot of those players, Nguzana, even Leratu Manzin is in that space. But uh, I think the first half was, uh, the good thing is that we wanted an early goal to, to make sure that uh, the game takes shape immediately. If they are coming to with a low block, they are immediately forced to come out and, and try to, to equalise, then the game is open for us. And we were fortunate to get those two goals. But uh, I think again after those two goals, we, we gave a little bit of time and space on the ball. Zuge managed to to have a lot of time in the ball in the latter stages of the first half, which uh, made us to look like we were defending a bit deep. And uh, we tried to push, but uh, maybe the players could not understand exactly what we were saying at that time because we were, we were unhappy that we they were having diagonal balls now going into their full backs, possibilities of getting even behind the defence. But I think second half we came we came back with a, a more resolute mind to to try and bury the game and also press a lot from the top and force a lot of errors from the even from their centre backs, which uh, we did. But there were some areas that we were very unhappy about. I think we, we gave them two or three counter attacks first half where one of them, if the goalkeeper had a good delivery, we, our rest defence was very bad. But uh, we are learning from this and the players that were playing, most of them do not play regularly. So it was also good for them to get a run and, and, and really gain these minutes that are very important in our preparation for all these competitions because as the competition progresses, we will need everyone. Uh, the the truth of the matter is that we've been playing like this for the past maybe five, six matches now, if you notice. Uh, Peter has also been coming from the white channels. Tapelo has been coming from the white channels. Kemit, even in the previous match where against Merrick, he was coming from that area. And we had two false nines uh, in uh, Lesedi and Caston with uh, Neo on one side uh, and Kemit on one side. Uh, <coughs> Then the, the two central midfielders, uh, Lebu and Debza, then APEC four. That was the, the structure and the idea to try and, because we knew they were going to have four in the, in the heart of the midfield, and that four would be confronted by our two false nines and the two central midfielders. And on the outside, they would be having wing backs. We anticipated that that they might play with a three-man defence. Uh, we never anticipated that they would play with a three-man midfield, but uh, the same thing applied. Their wing-backs would have to deal with a two versus one of uh, Kemit and uh, Mudau, and also of a Neo and Opry on the other side, and I think it came out right. Bravo. Thank you. Coach, just two quick ones. Um, starting off with what the men of the match, Gaston Serino, uh, three assists, one goal as well. Hasn't played, you know, in a very long time, maybe due to a couple of injuries. Uh, what is it that you told him for him to put such a good performance? I mean, obviously it's a lower division club, but you still have to put in those performances. What is it that you told him before the match for him to do what he did? And secondly, coach uh, Peter Shaluri and uh, Temba Zwani, top players always want to play matches, irrespective of you know the opposition. Uh, how did they take it when you told them that they're not starting and you're trying to rest them for the next game? Thank you. <clears throat> Maybe let me start with the second one. We we have an understanding with the team. Uh, we we understand we've got quite a serious number of matches to be played, which uh, I think I must give credit to the coaches and the players themselves that uh, we are in that mode now where we are comfortable to to rotate without any fear that hey, if we're tempering with this thing, it might cause problems for us. That is why maybe by now we have played more than 32 players uh, uh, in, in this competition or in this campaign, which, which is very positive for us. So 
Peter and Temba, they also understand. We 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 have called the Naros again on, on Tuesday and it's a very important match for us. We we want to make sure that this thing takes direction as well quickly and uh, we, we have to win uh, that league match. We also believed in the team that we had. We had a lot of quality. You know, at times people say you are playing fringe players and when you look at these fringe players, they are probably national team players almost from start to finish. So the truth of the matter is we the coaches have done very, very well in making sure that we give confidence to all the players and no player starts to, to think maybe I'm just here because they could not chase me away. Everybody believes I've got a chance to play and we must show that. We must, uh, we must not just talk about it, we must show it and it helps us because now with the number of games that we have, we, we've got a little bit of latitude to say, let's, let's play this team against Almeric, let's play this team against... Uh, against the summer field. Maybe we've got the same team against Golden Arrows. Then we go to Angola with another team. It's, 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 it's something that is working and everybody has got minutes and good match temperament because everybody has got a good match fitness. No one is coming from uh, having had a match maybe 15 matches before. Everybody has played in the last three matches. So that helps us to, to always have the right balance. And as for Gaston, uh, it was not particularly on him. Personally, as a coach, if there is one paranoia that I have, uh, I don't like to play these matches that everybody thinks I'm going to win. Those matches for me are, are, are the matches that always demand that I dig deeper uh, from a training perspective, a motivational perspective, and understanding the value of and the personality of our team to make sure that all at any given stage, if it's not about uh, the, car the character of the match in terms of the opposition, it should be about making sure that you, you show us that you deserve to play a big match by making sure that when you are given an, given an opportunity in these uh, so-called small matches, you show that you are a bigger player than the smaller matches. And all the players, we, we put a lot of pressure on them because... Our, these performances for us are not only just against Summerfield, but it's performances that must say to us, who do we have in the game against Golden Arrows, which is another very important match? Who do we have in the game against uh, Petro in Angola? Because it's another very important match for us. So there is no game that we take for granted. And I think this culture is, is really paying off for us because including friendly matches, we, even a friendly match, we, we want to win. We don't want to, to, to be lazy, daisy, and at this stage, a player like Gaston is a new acquisition for us. We, we, we are excited, even as the technical team, because when we look at Gaston, we are saying this is one additional member into the squad, because he has not played and is fresh. He can still give us a little bit more freshness in the game and help us going forward, and when he performs like this, we get excited. The same thing with Lebu, we've gained another player because he has not been around for the longest of time and when he is given an opportunity and he performs the way he performs, we get excited because for us it's like it's a new acquisition. The same with George applies. When we see a player that has not been playing, given an opportunity and really stamping his authority, then it says to us, maybe we look like a team that has just signed three more players towards the end of the season. And that is encouraging because it may not show physically, but the players that have had far too many matches, uh, they get an element of fatigue. Uh, Timbers one is not young. Uh, now, we, when we've got an opportunity to take him out so that he's always playing every match fresh, it's a benefit to us. When we've got surprise playing every match when he's fresh, it's a benefit to us. Unlike when we have to play him week in and week out uh, and he's bent down and he starts to get injured. But the moment they play fresh, I'm sure you saw how surprise played uh, against the Swallows. You saw how Mshishi played against Swallows. George also have a, had a very good performance. And those players that I'm mentioning are not young players, are players that it, it, if you've got a chance because they are influential in your team, to, to allow them to only play when they are 100% fresh, it gives you a chance to win that match easily than playing them even when they are tired. Because once you lose them because of injuries, 
it creates more problems for you because they, they are players that even in this match of Summerfield, if the game was not taking the, t the direction and the shape that we wanted, then you bring in Tembazwane, he brings character, the character of the team. Then you bring in a, 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 a Peter Shalulile, it's a completely different setup altogether. So Gaston is, is exciting all of us because all we want is uh, players to run, players to work very hard and players to really represent the club the way we want it to be represented. And they are not disappointing in that space and we are very excited. Um, Mido, he showed signs of a bit of a strain in the previous game. Is that why he didn't play today? And then you just spoke about resting players. Rushen has been rotated a lot over the past few weeks. Is he one, to one, question, so is he one of the players you're happy you've gotten at the moment? <coughs> Norman, uh, Mido and Rush to, to a certain extent, even Timbers one, surprisingly, in the last match, Rush, uh, on match day minus one, started vomiting and we were very worried because we thought maybe there is a bug or something uh, in the match. Uh, after the match, this, the doctors diagnosed this thing and they realized what, uh, there was an element of uh, indigestion and all that. And he got this in the training session prior to this match. Then we said, no, it's important for us to, 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 to take him out. But uh, the truth of the matter is probably would have played this match if it was not for that. But... Uh, <coughs> He's still the most important player for our team, uh, and uh, it's not it's not only rotating him. Because if you were to say uh, how much has Brian Onyango been ro rotated, how much has been Grant rotated, and you'll find that it's more or less the same. Because we do look at this data and the, and analyze these minutes and see who has performed more than the rest, and try to make sure that we keep them fresh. What was the other question? Mido was also in that in that space when we took him out uh, in Swallows. It was not the the injury like you saw. He also vomited a little bit in that space, and we we were worried with what what really happened. But we had to to rest him for this match with AJ to try and make sure that we refresh the team. But it was not true bad performance. He performed very well. AJ also did very well in the previous match. But it it is always important to to try and, and make sure that we have a fresher team, which I think uh, credit should be given to the team that we are working with because we we are really, really helping ourselves by always trying whenever there is a chance to play a fresh team all the time because it gives us a chance to go to that match with the same intensity because our game is, is very demanding and it's high octane, counter presses, high presses, uh, you you work a, a very hard. If if I can give you the mileage and the kilometers that we cover in a match, then you will understand what I'm talking about. Um, coach, to, to, uh, let's look a little bit in the Champions League now. I mean, obviously, when you reach the knockout stages, you must be prepared to play anyone anyway. But I'm sure from your perspective, you guys will be a little bit happier that you don't have to travel that far and just have to go. Um, uh, in a game that is not you know, on paper as it's going to be like those bigger teams in, in the north? If I were to be honest with you, uh, that Petro has really done exceptionally well uh, this season. And they've scored quite a number of goals. They've got some Brazilians that, that are very dangerous, uh, that have done a lot of good work. Uh, in their group, they could have easily been number one. Had they not been beaten by a, a widow in the last match, they looked like they were going to top that group, and they did very well. Uh, yes, obviously, when you are comparing it to to your Esperance, to your to your Belustad, and and all these other teams that uh, we could have played against, or Raja, yes, you would say, who are these guys? But for me. The Petro is, is very close to what we were when, when, when we were there in 2016 because everybody was asking, who are these guys? And we kept going, we kept going, we kept going. No one would have given them a chance to even be in the quarterfinals. So we are playing against a formidable team that we have to respect and, and understand it's not going to be easy. They are a free-scoring team. They, they are doing well even in their local league. So we, we have to really dig very deep. 
Yes, it's a bit of, of an advantage, the fact that we are not traveling very far. It's, it's an advantage uh, in terms of making sure that we face all competitions probably with less fatigue. But it's not an advantage because the opposition that we are playing is weaker. Because even the conditions in, in Angola are a little bit difficult sometimes. That place can be very hot. So we are just hoping everything will favor us. And uh, hopefully we, we get the results that we would be looking for. So in terms of like the person that we've been doing with the false lines and then having like Peter on the right and then sometimes Sailor inverts and then Lyle goes up, today Open goes up, he inverts, Sailor creates two new ones with um, uh, Kemet. Uh, would one be correct in assuming that this play, this team, as much as we are star players, but our game model is that we are star player in this team? Uh, I would really not want us to to go deeper into into how the team is playing. I, I think uh, I'm more comfortable with the fact that we are happy that the players are, are giving a good account of themselves and they seem to be understanding what we are trying to do because uh, this is, is, is one of the most elements in our game because we, we don't want to be too predictable with a lot of analysis and everything that is happening. We, I think in the NetBank Cup probably have played three, four systems already, because we are trying to make sure that we, we, you, you ask yourself, are they coming with a diamond midfield? Are they coming with a 4-3-3? Are they coming with a 4-2-3-1? Are they coming with uh, two false nines? It's, it's very important for us because uh, with the modern technology, it becomes very easy for, for opponents once you've got standard procedures. They know no this one will be doing this, this one will be doing that, but we, we are also able to change the system within the match because even how we finished this match was a little bit different. When we brought Pavel, then we had a straight number nine uh, and two wingers and, and a, and, 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 and a three-man midfield, it's a 4-3-3, three, three, but we, had, we did not start like that. So it's very important that we, our players also adapt to, this, to these uh, conditions because they, they can be demanding uh, mentally because uh, when we want to, to defend with our wide uh, strikers, maybe we will want play to be forced inside or we will want play to be forced outside into the fullback. So those, those dynamics are very critical because you are not only looking at, I want to force play inside. It must also be influenced by where do we have numerical superiority. Are we having numerical superiority on the inside where we can force play in or are we having numerical superiority when we take them to the line or we are inferior inside and we realize we need an extra defender which can be the touch line. So it's, it's, it's very important that players also understand these, these dynamics and they are responding very well and we are very excited.